Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you very much for this great opportunity to talk about our research that we are performing at the University of Sega Department of Microbiology. Um, so the title of my talk is The Hidden Killers, the Human Fungal Pathogens, which is a completely different topic from the brain and the pancreas. But I'm, I'm, uh, I hope that I will convince you that uh, working with microbes can be as interesting as working with our brain. So um, I would like to uh, introduce this, uh, this phenomena, the, the hidden killers in, in different levels. But uh, before I start, I would like to talk about what are fungi, fungi uh, at all. So probably you know that they are, uh, they are belonging to the uh, different uh, kingdom, they are different from plants and animals, but uh, probably the most important thing is that they are extremely diverse. And they are uh, a very, very diverse uh, um, uh, actually uh, um, organisms. We know about 150,000 uh, species. They are quite well characterized. But there is an estimation that uh, more than 5 million different uh, species exist in the, in the Earth. So uh, these fungi are hidden. Why they are hidden? Because uh, the first reason is because they are quite small. So they, are, uh, they have two forms of living. They can exist as a single cells, or they can also form a chain of uh, cells together, which is called hyphae. And um, if you have this part of uh, this kind of uh, uh, form, then they are quite small, or they are actually hidden in the soil, because that you see the mushroom is actually just the fruiting body of this uh, mycelium. Um, the fungi are quite interesting. The, the biggest, la biggest and largest living organism is actually a fungi, which is quite surprising. This is an armillaria, and uh, this is a this is not a big uh, organism, more than 5.5 ki uh, quadrat kilometers big, and it's a heavy one. It's 600 tons, and it's a quite old one. The estimated age is about 2,400 uh, years. But um, uh, I, I think it, it's also well known that, that uh, fungi can be good and bad as well. So uh, probably I don't need to uh, tell this, but uh, uh, we eat uh, uh, fungi. We also uh, take advantage on the fermentation. So some beverages which we uh, like, as we heard in the first presentation, is made by fungi. And also uh, they made antibiotics like uh, penicillin. <coughs> penicillin saved uh, millions of life, lives already in the earth. But uh, fungi can be bad as well. So uh, they can cause a significant damage. Uh, not only in, in the agriculture, because we have a lot of uh, plant pathogen fungi, but they can cause disease in animals as well as in, uh, in the human uh, beings. And uh, they can be uh, quite horroristic, as this book says. The fungus can kill people, and uh, you, you see this is uh, one of the most uh, dangerous fungi we can imagine. But uh, completely, to, to be a little bit more serious, uh, the bad fungi can cause several diseases as well. So I don't know if you know, but over one million eyes go blind each year because of fungal keratitis, and pneumocytis, which, which can cause pneumonia, is one of the most common killers of children with AIDS. And also nearly a billion people suffer uh, skin infections. They don't die, but it's a very, very uncomfortable um, situation. And this, is, uh, this belongs to the, to the fourth most common illness on Earth. More than 300,000 people annually uh, got infection by candida species, and over one million people suffer of fungal meningitis each year. Surprisingly enough, there is no um, global surveillance about fungal infections. There are only estimation. But the estimation is that fungal infections kill more people than malaria or tuberculosis annually, which is quite surprising. So uh, probably I was able to show you that, that fungal infections are really interesting. But in the recent years, we are entering in a completely new era. And I would like to convince you to enter to this new era is uh, what? Because probably in the next couple of years, the microbiome research will be one of the most important 
uh, uh, important research in the future. You know, we have uh, a huge, a large amount of foreign cells in our body. Actually, we have about 10 to the 14 uh, foreign organisms, foreign cells in our body, which is more than our human cells. So uh, they have to do something with us. This is no question about that. And uh, there is an increasing number of publications and evidence that microbiome and disease are linked together. And that's why I'm telling you, because uh, there is um, uh, already um, uh, proven that asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, or heart disease can be linked to our microbiome. But also obesity, diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, they are also linked to, to our microbiome. But even more surprisingly, there are diseases that you wouldn't think as the first thing, that for example, depression and also aut autism are linked to our mi uh, uh, microbiome. microbiome. So we, probably I was able to show you that, that microbiome or the community of the, the microbes in our body are really important. But what about our, what about our fungal community? Um, we, there is very little research about this, uh, uh, this area. Uh, one of, the, uh, one of, of these few research showed that uh, uh, different uh, body sites of our, uh, uh, of our human body uh, contains different type of uh, uh, fungal communities. So our oral, oral cavity, the skin, the lungs, and the gastrointestinal tract has also fungal cells in it. And um, fortunately enough, uh, we, and as you can see here, some of them are, are pathogenic fungi. And uh, fortunately enough, we don't develop fungal diseases even if they can be pathogenic. So this is an extremely in interesting question why the, uh, these pathogens, the potential pathogens, didn't uh, develop a disease. So we are working on, on these host pathogen interactions for a long time. And this is actually a so-called uh, interaction triangle between the host, the pathogen, and the microbiome. This is a quite complex uh, interaction. As you can see here, there are numerous different uh, uh, conditions that can influence the host and pathogen uh, um, uh, interactions, such as immune system, the genomic variation of the host, because you can be uh, susceptible for, uh, for an uh, infection based on the um, mutation in, in certain genes. And also the pathogens uh, can develop certain, uh, certain ways to, to escape from the immune system. But there is also a very important aspect, and this aspect is that we are working together, we are living together with this huge amount of microbes. And we, that's why we have a huge genetic diversity which is actually not belonging to us. So we have a lot more genes that are actually not human genes, and also a lot more uh, diverse metabolic uh, activity that is actually based on, on the microbial community that we have inside in our body. So altogether, this community, this complexity, can uh, uh, end up in a superorganism, which is the host and the microbiome uh, together. And certainly, we have certain, uh, certain microbes that are living with us uh, completely harmless, and in a certain point in our life, they can just transfer to a very, very uh, dangerous pathogen. How this commons are versus pathogen interaction is able to uh, take place? This is an extremely interesting question, and we spent a couple of years to understand these interactions, and we were able to identify different type of escape mechanisms of fungal, fungal species, species, how they can uh, uh, escape from the from the immune system. And here you can see, for example, a macrophage, a human macrophage, phagocyting uh, uh, fungal species. And inside the macrophage, the microbes are supposed to die. But it's not happening. As you can realize here, they are budding. They are living very, uh, very happy uh, in the, inside the macrophage. So they developed something that makes able to survive inside the macrophage. This is another example where you can see that the, that the fungal cell is able to change the morphology, which belongs to one of the most important virulence factors. So the metabolic activity is still there. They can change the morphology, form hyphae, and eventually kill the macrophage at the end. And here you can see another very interesting phenotype 
namely so-called exocytosis. After phagocytosis, the fungal cell is able to leave the macrophage without harming the macrophage at all because they is moving and also can uh, divide afterwards. And the, the fungus is also able to, to bud at the end. Okay, so this can work like a Trojan horse in our body to, uh, to disseminate uh, fungal infections. So, um, to altogether, uh, we realized recently that, okay, so our immune system is, uh, is uh, uh, responsible for this uh, defense. This is very important. But what our Im immune system does, actually, uh, in reality? In reality, our immune system fights against uh, enemies from outside. These are the pathogens. But they also fight against uh, 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 enemies from inside, so cancer cells. And if you, if you put together all this, then the common interest from both sides is fight against immune system. So if they use the same uh, um, arsenal of different uh, mechanisms to fight against immune system, then it is also possible that they came, became synergistic. So the change of your microbiome can also influence the cancer uh, development and the progression. So this is one of the uh, newest uh, uh, publication about this. This is a more sophisticated presentation of this. So if your um, uh, human microbiome uh, uh, cause an immune inhibition, suppression of immune system that can actually interact with, with the cancer, can, hope, can help the, the, the escape, and also eventually can um, um, promote the oncogenesis. To prove this hypothesis, we, we decided to work on this, and then uh, we, this is just the primary data, data that we, we compared uh, oral, oral um, uh, cancer patients, and as you can see here, the oral cancer, cancer patients has a much higher fungal load in the, in the oral cavity, and here this is the same oral cavity, just the cancer super, uh, um, uh, surface and the healthy surface, and there is a tendency that they have have more uh, 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 fungal burden on the, on the cancerous uh, surface. And uh, even more interestingly, when you analyze the, the, the species distribution of these patients, that you see much more candida species on the, on the cancer patients. So uh, we asked the question, is there any type of microbiome which is, which is uh, based on fungal species, and is there any oncomycom? So to answer this question, you can do a metagenomics. So now we are f uh, focusing on metagenomics, taking advantage on, on high throughput sequencing, the ion proton, which is a great advantage of, of uh, sequencing technology, which can produce a huge amount of large sequence, uh, large sequence data. And uh, what we are doing now, we, we, we will com uh, uh, compare that to known genomes. There is an ongoing project, the 1000 fungal uh, genome project we are involved in. And then we are going to identify relevant microbial players which can, which can help us to build and test prediction models uh, uh, if there is any correlation between, between microbial, microbial community and, uh, for example, can, cancer severity. So what are the perspectives? Why, why, why I would like to convince you to, to work with microbes and the microbiome? So if we will have a good understanding of the microbiome, we could develop more effective therapies, potential prophylactic, uh, prophylactics, probably we could prevent from autoimmune diseases, help to avoid allergy, and we probably could develop more effective anti-cancer uh, strategies. And with this, I would like to thank for your attention. This is the team that's working with, uh, with us. If you would like to work, uh, know about our research more, then go to our uh, homepage, and we have uh, great collaborators for all around the world. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer your questions.